Get a behind the scenes look at the Coon Rapids Police Department in the new year. The Community Police Academy is a free six week program that runs Tuesday evenings between January 24th and February 28th. The Academy offers an opportunity for dialogue between participants and members of the police department while exploring a variety of public safety topics. Participants will go on a ride along with an officer on patrol and take part in a canine and DUI demonstration. To register, just log on to the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov. The class is limited to 20 participants. If you're shopping for some holiday magic in Coon Rapids, stop by Riverdale Village and check out Santa's Wonderland. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! For over 30 years, Santa Mike worked as a mall Santa. He wanted to break out of the mold. Now, in this new space, he can entertain even more with families. There we go. Merry Christmas, little one. For a flat fee, you can take the pictures with your own camera. You take as much time as you want, take all the photos you want to take, and it works out nice for the family. There are a variety of scenic backdrops to use to take even more pictures, like with Santa's reindeer and sleigh. To me, that's uh, a center point of Santa's Wonderland, because the kids love the sleigh and the reindeer. <laughs> there we go. On average, a family can spend upwards of 30 minutes taking pictures to their heart's content. Everybody likes the Grinch. Grinch is probably the third most popular picture to get with. A photo with Santa at Christmas is a special memory that lasts a lifetime. And that's what I get out of it, helping the kids to believe in the magic of Christmas. Santa's Wonderland is open daily Monday through Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Sunday from 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. The last day for pictures is on Friday, December 23rd. The biomedical science classes at Coon Rabbits High School attract the best and the brightest students. Uh, I'm going to do an ANOVA test. And it is here where senior Jesse Coe's knack for science shines. I'm very interested in biochemistry and cellular biology, and I hope to one day work in a lab and work with uh, diseases and how to treat them. Okay, what's the story? His teacher, Luke Glidden, says Jesse's fun to have in class. It's well known and discussed among his peers that if you're looking for someone with the right answer, you turn to Jesse. At the start of his senior year, Jesse was recognized as a National Merit Scholar semifinalist. It's a prestigious achievement based on his PSAT and ACT test scores used for getting into college. One of my strengths is I can learn a lot of information really quickly and I can really dissect what's important. Jesse has his sights set on attending top schools like Johns Hopkins. Right now, he's weighing his options. As a youngster, Jesse's parents instilled the value of education on him, including music. One of my earliest memories is them like sitting with me at the dinner table, like going through math books, going through reading and English books. Jesse has already submitted another application in hopes of becoming a finalist in the National Merit Scholarship Program. It's a chance to open doors for even more college and business scholarships. It includes all my extracurriculars, the classes I took, my GPA, as well as a personal essay that I had to submit. Among Jesse's many achievements, he rose to the role of drum major for the Cardinals marching band. He'll find out in January if he gets chosen as a National Merit Scholar finalist. Until then, he'll stay focused on the task at hand. I am thankful that I get this opportunity to get a sum of money to pay for my higher education. On Wednesday, there was lots of fun and games at Fire Station 1 for the fire poster winners from eight elementary schools in Coon Rapids. Kaylin! It's a good community event to get out and meet some kids, reach out to families, and a good opportunity for them to see what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and get to know us. Check it out. It's a perfect fit. How did you do that? They were treated to a magic show as they ate pizza with firefighters from Sea Shift. Two! The overall poster contest winner was fourth grader Sophia Narr from Sand Creek Elementary. 
She captured the judges' hearts with this year's theme, Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape. This is a house on fire, and if you're too high up, you have to like wave like a cloth to help to get help to get down. Now her poster is going to the state fire marshal um, association's statewide poster contest, and we will find out probably in April if she has won the overall state. The pizza party also provided a teaching moment for these lucky students. And where did the fire start? In our garage. In the garage. Sophia and her family survived a house fire a couple of years ago. Thankfully, everyone made it out safe, and she learned an important lesson. That you always had to be ready in case there is a fire. I think the other kids really listen then because it's their peer or someone that's their same age that dealt with this. Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, December 6th City Council meeting. The 2023 city budget and tax levy has been approved. On Tuesday night, the council set the levy for next year at $33.3 million, which is a 7.5% increase over this year's levy. In addition to inflation, part of the jump in the levy is due to a loss of more than $1.1 million in local government aid from the state. The budget includes one new full-time position, an embedded mental health professional in the police department. Previously, that position was split with the city of Blaine. The budget also includes funding to complete and equip new fire station three and money to start construction of a new water tower. You can find more on the next year's budget on the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov. A big rise in the number of catalytic converter thefts has many local communities taking action. This week, the City Council introduced a new ordinance related to possession of a detached catalytic converter. Anyone in possession of one must be able to provide proof that they received it lawfully from the vehicle's owner or have a receipt for the purchase. Violation is a misdemeanor. Currently, there's no state law re regulating possession or resale of a detached catalytic converter. Plans for street reconstruction next year are well underway. In 2023, four and a half miles of city streets will be reconstructed in the area south of 131st Avenue between Coon Creek Boulevard and Shenandoah Boulevard. Property owners impacted will be assessed a portion of the reconstruction cost. And that's a quick recap of the December 6th City Council meeting. As always, you can find the full meetings on cable or the CTN Coon Rapids YouTube channel. The Nogatapan School Board selected a new superintendent this week. On Wednesday night, the board voted 5-1 to one to hire Corey McIntyre for the role pending successful contract negotiations. McIntyre, who currently serves as superintendent of Osseo Area Schools, is no stranger to the Nogatapan School District. He served as assistant superintendent and executive director of student services between 2016 and 2019. Prior to that, he worked in several other school districts in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Washington. In a statement, McIntyre said, quote, Anoka Hennepin Schools has demonstrated a commitment to excellence and a belief that all students can learn at high levels. I believe the mission and vision of the district is a match with my philosophy of education and my skills and abilities as a leader, unquote. Contract negotiations are currently underway. McIntyre is expected to start as superintendent on July 1st. Tis the season for holiday lights, and there's no shortage of beautiful displays around Coon Rapids. More than 20 homeowners have entered this year's holiday lighting contest, and judging takes place this weekend. You can find a map of all the entries on the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov. The winners will be announced later this month. The contest is sponsored by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission. We have a lot of people who come from outside our borders and they target our stores to commit you know, thefts on a regular basis. Coon Rapids is home to one of the biggest retail areas in Anoka County. And while Riverdale Village is rolling out the welcome mat to shoppers this holiday season, 
mall management is teaming up with police to crack down on thieves. So far they've been very, very effective and um, our team is really happy with them. Just before Black Friday, Riverdale Village installed automatic license plate reader cameras at all six of its entrances. When a vehicle travels past one of those cameras and that vehicle is wanted by law enforcement, for instance, it's a stolen vehicle or there's a wanted person in the vehicle, then our retail team gets notified of that. Considering 70% of thefts happen with a stolen vehicle, it's one of the great ways to stop these before it even happens. Ryan Burke, senior property manager at Riverdale Village, says the cameras have already helped track down thieves and prevented thefts. If the customers are safe, the store employees are safe, more people are gonna to come to shop, profits are better, less things are getting stolen, it's a benefit for everybody. Officers Steve Minion and Daniel Forsman, who work out of the police substation at Riverdale, walk the retail beat seven days a week, working closely with store managers and employees. Through the end of the year, additional police patrols will be deployed on weekends. We're just trying to do what we can to crack down here in our community and send a message that we won't tolerate this behavior. Back in 2017, the Minnesota State Legislature updated rules related to development in the Mississippi River Corridor critical area, which runs through the Twin Cities. Recently, local cities, including Coon Rapids, were required to adopt new standards. Minnesota is the headwaters of the Mississippi. They feel it's very important for us to pre preserve the quality of this water, and they do that through controlling the construction that goes along and any work that goes along the shorelines, the bluff lines um, along the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River Corridor Critical Area, which was designated as such back in 1976, stretches for 72 miles from the cities of Ramsey and Dayton down to Hastings and Ravina Township. It includes 54,000 acres of land along both sides of the river. Most of these rules uh, relate to, to those property owners that live along the river or own property along the river. Most of it is private residential homes. Um, there are some uh, public institutions, for example, Anoka Ramsey Community College uh, is along the river. They're also subject to, to these rules. The three big changes include new design standards for acceptable river access, including paths, stairways, water-oriented structures, patios, and decks. Specific definitions have been developed for things like bluff line and bluff impact zone. And finally, permits are now required for certain land alterations and vegetation removal. Previously, we didn't really have a permitting requirement if someone was going to do some fairly significant work along the river, whether that's vegetation removal, um, putting in riprap, a retaining wall. We didn't really have a process for doing that. So, so this will now require a permit if you're going to be doing any of that, that kind of work. The DNR created a model ordinance to help cities update their own ordinances to align with the new regulations. Anything that's, that was legally established prior to the updated ordinance will be considered uh, you know, a legal nonconformity if it doesn't meet the, the new standards. And so there are protections under state law for legal nonconformities. To comply with DNR requirements, the Coon Rapids City Council adopted an updated zoning ordinance for the critical area in the fall of 2022. So the City Council, we need to adopt them and make them part of the city ordinances because we'll be responsible for the permitting and for the enforcement. A lot of the changes, I think, are really related to permitting, clarification about rules. Um, things like structure setbacks are not changing, so I think it's important for people to understand that this is really updating and modernizing our ordinance, but I don't know that there's um, drastic changes that we're making to it. In the end, everyone along the 72-mile corridor hopes the changes will help protect a gem so it's around for generations to come. If you'd like to learn more about the changes or find information on development standards and permitting requirements, just log on to the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov slash mrcca.